How did you How did you do your work, Trevor, with uh, infrared in the late fifties? Explain that. Well, uh, I took unto myself the idea that we have a certain window through which we perceive ocularly. Uh, eyesight has a certain bandwidth, and uh, if you took a thousand people, most of them would perceive within that range of frequencies the red at one end and the violet at the other. And use of infrared film is simply the, the use of a specially sensitized film uh -huh. in an ordinary camera where that film is sensitized by dyes to extend into the infrared. Mm -hmm. And what this does is widen your window on reality. And I looked at these naval sightings uh, off, off Okinawa in 1945, and I deduced from that that the frequencies that are used for, for microwave radar immediately adjoin the infrared. Mm. They morph into the infrared, in fact. So my thinking was, why don't we go into the infrared and see if these things that are invisible to the eye are visible to infrared film. It's a very simple step, step straightforward, and, and okay. uh, you know, there's, there's, there's no mysticism, no magic, no metaphysics. And uh, that's what it did. And, of course, we started doing it, and here, lo and behold, in this immediately adjacent realm, uh, before the red, the infrared, are forms, objects, that we would have to describe as UFOs, but perhaps not the ships from other planets, Right. that uh, people had uh, precipitately felt the UFO phenomenon was confined to. But not confined to that at all, no. as, you, as you found out. In point of fact, these objects which you photographed, if you will, filmed with infrared film, may well be living organisms in some cases. That's right. I think the very first uh, large success we had with this uh, shook us because up to that time we were all already sold on the idea ourselves that this was ships from other planets. This was what it was all about. Right. It had to be that because uh, our mechanistic minds uh, did not allow any other uh, possibilities. So we hold up this this uh, this film. It was processed by a professional photographer in North Hollywood. It wasn't even processed by us. And he came running out of the uh, of the dark room, and he says, "You got him! You got him! You got him!" Hmm. And here was this uh, huge disc, you know, that uh, discoidal uh, form on the film that left no doubt that the uh, that the thing was there. It was a, was a, it was something, an artifact that we had not seen that was hmm. right close to us. Hmm. And but the trouble was it had anatomical details. It looked like something from under the microscope. Yeah. All right. Pretty amazing. Be right back with. Trevor James Constable in just a couple minutes. Okay, talking with Trevor James Constable about his work in the 1950s filming with infrared film uh, huge aerial creatures that, that apparently live in the atmosphere like fish live in the water. These are, are plasmoidal types of objects. And, and how many altogether different archetypes did you discover, Trevor? Oh, I would say uh, probably five or six main types that, uh -huh. that came through the years uh, to these methods. But um, the great majority of the things that were detected were spheroidal. And this, of course, relates to the Mexican experience of recent date. Right. Uh, that is at least partially due in, in an etheric sense to the fact that they are uh, heat objects. They consist very largely of uh, warmth ether in, yeah. in those terms. They give off heat. And that's yes, and that's why they are spheroidal also, because spheroidal things are normally produced by uh, the activity of the, of the warmth ether. Uh -huh. That's how we understand that. Okay, we need to define ether for our audience again. Well, it's like a, a um, very ultra-subtle undergirding to the physical world. It's not accepted by conventional science, but as I have shown in the rain engineering developments, it is technologically accessible with very 
very simple equipment. In fact, the devices that I use, I, I often boast that they are the simplest technological devices in the world. There's nothing simpler. It's a, a, a hollow tube with nothing in it. No, no. <laughs> and this is how you tap uh, into the ether and you can make it do what you want within limits, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But all this should, you know, have long ago received university attention and been driven forward with proper resources uh, as, a, as a national priority instead of being uh, left in the hands of somebody like myself, a lone operator all by himself <laughs> and, uh, you know, battling the odds of, of uh, mass opinion in every phase of it. Well, you're one of the great adventurers of, of, uh, of the last half century and into the new century as well. And, you know, you're tough. And thanks to you, we have this technology now. And I am very proud to say that uh, I own both the videos that, uh, that I originally The videos are available. Uh, you, ought, you folks really ought to look at this if you think it's a joke. It's not. It's amazing. It's, uh, you know, pressed down and running over. And actually, I've got... Uh, I've got miles of time-lapse video that I've never released or put together. I just oh. haven't had time to do it. No, oh, well, uh, which so, you have uh, you know, it is, it is absolutely beyond contradiction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's not my, not my fault if the universities uh, can't take this up or, or follow it down. Right. Uh, they're, you know, they're trying to, to uh, send missiles through Saddam Hussein's bathroom window. That's, that's where their heads are. Exactly. Now... The Mexican images, when you first saw the story and saw the pictures, immediately connected back with your work of a half century ago. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this uh, this uh, incident in Mexico is, in my opinion, the most signal thing that has happened in ufology since the very inception of the modern period with Kenneth Arnold and others. Wow. There's nothing that compares with it uh, for the force that it carries. You have, first of all, a solid statement being issued under the imprimatur of the Secretary of, the, of Defense for Mexico. Right. Right. He is the Rumsfeld of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So this is not an individual that you can brush into the gutter. Uh, secondly, you have the, the men aboard the, the uh, aeroplane themselves mm -hmm have spoken in interviews to describe exactly and precisely what their experiences were. All of this has been released to the world at large, and the chief feature of it is that they did not see these objects visually. Right. That is the cardinal point, and nothing like this has happened uh, since ufology came into the world in, in the 40s. We see, apparently in the skies, emptiness, but yes. the skies are far from empty. That's right. <laughs> we, we found when we were exposing infrared film, and this, uh, Jeff, would also be true right down to this day, that if you expose infrared film and you are careful about how you process the film mm -hmm. so that you get a, a balance between light and dark in the in the negative, and then you print you print from that negative like you would an ordinary photograph, right. and you look very carefully into the into the background of the print. You see all kinds of forms and shapes that you did not see with the eye, and there are many of the classic Adams key type flying saucers. In in a skyscape, you want to photograph an infrared. You just have to look for them in the right way. Uh, in the photographic prints. Adamski. Right. You said a, a kind of a, another legendary yes. name. Yes, yeah, uh, Don George. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, people hearing you talk about these things would say, okay, we can't see them with the naked eye. They're in the infrared range. Does that mean that they're not physically there in our sense of three-dimensional reality, or does it mean that they are there but they're just vibrating at a different level, and we can't see them. That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, the same thing is true at the other side of the visible spectrum, the ultraviolet. When you go beyond the violet, you have mm -hmm. another range of form up there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, NASA shot a great deal of ultraviolet videotape from that shuttle in 1996. 
and there was uh, UFOs all over that footage, and oh, they looked like something out of the cosmic pulse of life. That is uh, a stunning piece of videotape, and yes, I've got, I've got that just to see 